Boom, it's crazy time. This is Mind Pump, the world's best podcast on YouTube. We just won that award. We gave it to ourselves. Doesn't matter. We still won it. All right, so check this out. We're going to give away another program today because that's what we do every single time because we're very generous giving people. That's exactly what we are. It has nothing to do with improving our YouTube algorithms. Anyhow, here's how you win. Free access to MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder-inspired workout program. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours of this episode. Talk about the intro. Disagree or agree with one of our opinions. I don't care. Make it good. If we pick your comment, you get free access to Map Split. Isn't that awesome? Super great. Also, you have to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Otherwise, you win nothing. Ha ha. Nothing at all. So do all those things and you can win a free program. One more thing. We are running a sale all month long. Maps hit and the No BS Six Pack Formula, two programs, 50% off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com, but you have to use the code July Special for that discount. All right. Enjoy this amazing podcast. Actually, what I want to talk about or want to bring up is actually uh, your cool vlog video that Eli did, which oh, I yeah. thought, um, wow, do you look amazing right what? now? What? It's not going to happen. I'm not going to get to either one of those, but they're good targets. What do they say? You yeah, I know. this is a. This is Justin. This is Adam. This is how he plays the mind games, dude. <laughs> is he gonna try to sabotage yes, you? Yes, he's like, bro, you look great. Relax. No, no, Go eat whatever you want. No, no, I've I'm been trip. saving that for when I get home. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what that means. I can. But. By the way, I can tell. I know you wear shirts all the time, trying not to show off anything. Yeah. But I can see what's happening. Bro. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. A, this last week and a half, I was a little uh, I inconsistent. Can, but. I can see some abs through that t-shirt. Yeah, they're no, they're they're there. They're there. Yeah. yeah. I'm on no, the, you, you know what I learned from watching that workout video that he he filmed me on. Was, uh, I am completely unaware of my facial expressions and sounds when I work out. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you do you, like do you subscribe yeah. to the theory that it's uh, exactly like your O face? Do you think that it's the same? <laughs> Bro, if I it's got to be close. If I make that face when I'm having sex, I think you do. Like, it's like borderline painful. Yeah. Justin was telling <laughs> me it looks just like that. <laughs> How does One Justin know? Yeah. A lot, a lot of power, a lot, a lot of teeth. No, a, a seriousness though. What, what I want to, I'll, I'll send it to Jessica. And I'll be like, honey, is this what I? <laughs> yeah. Be is honest. You have to like? say that to be yeah. honest. Is that what it really looks like yeah. or what? Uh, no, but you brought up something that we've we've talked about on the show before uh, about supersets. Yeah. Um, and I, I I want you to talk a little bit more about your you specific your routine that you were doing, but you mentioned it on the vlog. So those that get a chance to go over to the uh, it's on the Mind Pump TV or Mind Pump Podcast channel is it going to go on? Do you know Doug? Mind Pump Podcast? Yeah. yeah. So it'll be there. He'll link it. Uh, Eli should link it to this this video on YouTube. Right. And so you'll see Sal's uh, amazing arms and shoulders when he's working out, and then you also see him really talk about the supersets mm -hmm. and how and why you are using them. And this is personally how I use it too. And I find I find that it's far more valuable this way than having this like rigid programming that I have to do it uh, on, on these weeks or being careful of not falling in the trap of always supersetting uh, your routine. Totally agree. I, I think in the past, the value of supersets was, uh, we were told at least, was that it burns more calories, right? So- if you're getting, if you're trying to cut, well, then you should superset because that accelerates the fat loss. Now, here's why that's uh, kind of a false, um, I guess, way of explaining the benefit of supersets. The goal of resistance training should always be to build uh, muscle and strength, okay? Even when you're dieting, because the more stimulated your body is to build muscle and strength while you're dieting, the less muscle you'll lose or maybe even build, especially if you're a beginner. So the question is, why was I doing supersets when right now I'm trying to get lean? It's not because of the calorie burn. It's because, number one, I haven't done supersets consistently in a while, so it's new stimulus. But here's the big one. It's the psychological benefit. I can't lift as heavy when I'm eating less calories. It's just not going to work. I'm not going to be as strong when I'm cutting my calories and cutting my carbs as I was before when I was eating you know, seven, 800 more calories a day and I was eating more carbohydrates. So because supersets require you to go lighter anyway, it works well with my psyche. Because if I stay, if I went into a strength training phase with like three, you know, minute rests and heavy, it's going to mess with my head because- Yeah, you're calorie deprived right now. So your strength's probably down five it's or 10%. It's like demoralizing. Yes, yeah. yes, totally. So the supersets are just, psychologically, I'm like, I'm not going to lift this heavy anyway. 
let me do supersets. So what I did in the video was I kind of did like a phase three maps aesthetic style workout. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple ways that that the the supersets are set up. There's either same body part superset, so like two exercises for chest back to back, and it's usually a compound lift and isolation lift or something like that. And then the other way, which is what I was doing in the video, were opposing muscle groups. So I'd go chest back superset. That's a fun one. Yes, or yeah. bicep tricep superset, which I love. You know, I love the way that feels. So now of that workout, did you have a favorite? Well, you have a favorite superset you did. There's two that I really, really enjoy doing. I really, really love doing a some kind of a chest press, so an incline press, for example, and a barbell row, or an incline press and a pull up. It just feels great to get both sides of my torso kind of pumped and feeling good. And then they help, right? Because as I'm doing the barbell row, it's kind of working with my posture. Then I go into my press. It's like beneficial. And then the other superset that I love is a, a just a basic dumbbell curl to a lying dumbbell skull crusher. Because I have I use the same dumbbell. So I'm uh, seated, yeah. curls, and then right to skull crushers. And then if, you're bice if you like having a bicep pump and you like having a tricep pump, Imagine having both, right? Yeah. Feels really, really good. The so. other thing that you actually mentioned in there that you didn't uh, comment on that I thought is uh, really smart too is that you talk about being on a time constraint. Yeah. So, you know, obviously when you are supersetting all the exercises, the workout moves, you know, it's almost cut in half. Yep. You know, so I also like to do it like that where it's, hey, the, oh, I didn't know that this morning I was going to be running late or I didn't know that something came up. So I only have 30 minutes to work out today. Oh, because I don't train in supersets all the time. What a great time mm -hmm. for me to do it. So I kind of like to allow it just to happen like that. It's yeah. like there, it's it. Most people have those days, right? Unless you're completely dedicated to bodybuilding and that's your 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 that's livelihood. Your job. Yeah, it's your job. Most other people shit happens. You know, kid kid had a rough day getting started that day, yep. or you didn't get very much sleep last night, or a meeting got called last minute, whatever. And so now all of a sudden your hour and a half or hour that you had planned for your workout now gets condensed to 45 minutes or 30. Oh, what's great is because I don't use supersets all the time. There's tremendous value in me doing yeah. one, doing it at a time. You know, like what's that. funny is that, uh, cause I've been doing this for like you guys, right? We've been doing this for a long time that I used to get so pissed off when something like that would happen where I had this like, oh, I got an hour and 20 minute planned workout. And then, you know, Sal, you got an appointment yeah. in 40 minutes or you get there late because the, you know, the baby, you know, had a blowout or something like that. And I get so mad. And then I would speed up through the workout through supersets or shorter rest periods. And then I'd always be like, man, that was a good workout. Yeah, well, actually, that kind of worked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. So, yeah. or if you just like all of a sudden, you're like, well, I have an hour to work out. And they're like, well, this used to happen when I owned my studio. I'd be like, well, I have an hour to work out. So here's my plan. And then my client canceled. So I'm like, well, I got two hours. I'm just going to go real slow. And then at the end of that, I'm like, man, that was a great worker. So now it's like I embrace short time, long time. Like, let's make it work. Well, and, what do you, and what do you attribute that most to? Novelty? Totally. Yeah. 100% it's novelty. You, I don't care who you are, you get stuck in your favorite thing. I do, well, for sure. That's why I like saving a lot of those techniques, though, for like times like that. Agreed. You know, yeah. yeah, where you have even like some of those drop sets and some of the crazier stuff that you know, we do every now and then, or we'll try and program. It's like, oh, yeah, remember this fun technique uh, when we're writing programs? Because it's like the novelty of it, it totally just shakes things up and, and your yeah. body just responds in, in cool ways. Totally. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you guys, because I wasn't with you guys on this great uh, 4th of July holiday. Uh, how was it? How was it for you guys? We, I was low key. It was fun. Yeah. So I actually was just Katrina and I, Katrina and I and Max, which I was so excited that Katrina allowed me to do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, normally you have we, to do the big family Yeah, appearance. normally it's all, and we've, we just done a lot, right? We just got back from Truckee for a week with all of us and our families. And then we, we didn't even drive home from Truckee. We stopped in Lodi where my best friend and his family at and met my two best friends, their, mm -hmm. their wives and kids. And so we, we didn't even drive all the way home. We stopped there. And we, so the day before the 4th, we kind of celelebrated the 4th with them, which, mm -hmm. by the way, I don't know if you got oh, – I don't think I showed you guys. So I, I let Ma Max do uh, sparklers or whatever. Oh, he did? Uh, yeah, I took Katrina freaking <laughs> out. I guess after after the fact, I was like, oh, that probably wasn't very responsible because I'm out there, right? I'll send you guys the video so you guys oh, have it. Wow. And – 
Uh, you know, we're out. by himself, like he's running yeah. around with it. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're like bring it in too close. Yeah, you're like, body. hey, son, oh, go run through the field with this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, we uh, well, first thing she uh, she pulls out. I mean, we got my son's the youngest at gonna be two, two literally tomorrow, right? So my son, my son's the youngest, and then you have uh, my buddy Justin and his kid is uh, three and a half, and then my my, my buddy other buddy's daughter is three. And so they're obviously a little bit further along with being able to do things like that. And, you know, they weren't even letting their kids do that yet. And I'm like, ah, he'll be fine. My kid's chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going to go try and burn something down. And and I had him, of course, I had him corralled, like, between my legs. So, and I'm, like, right there. Yeah, he's with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. like, oh, see you later. Go have yeah. fun with the sparkler. I'm not that stupid, <laughs> Teaching right? him how to light it. Here's a light. But, yeah. <laughs> I, did, I didn't realize how much those things burn, though. You know what I'm and saying? And they don't so, go out. Yeah, yeah. You can put them in water and they'll keep going. Yeah, oh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sitting there and I have short and no socks I'm barefoot he's barefoot we're out on the street and stuff like that and he's between my legs and we're doing this and he's waving around and Katrina's like freaking out I'm like ah he's fine he's fine and then like one of the little sparks like land on my foot and I was like oh shit (laughs) (laughs) she's like that's why you can't let him do that I'm like okay maybe this is not a good idea (laughs) but he was fine he survived he's alive I didn't burn my son so you scar him for life I swear to god this is why fathers and mothers exist dude because the balance oh we have to yeah Yeah, yeah. the balance could you imagine if it was just dads yeah and the same the other direction I I said Katrina's like always like soup she like she freaks out when i wrestle with them and everything yeah, yeah. so i try and remind her so listen if we had a daughter well, you did the ddt to him the other day yeah, so, i mean that's yeah. a little aggressive for him. <laughs> remember the ddt Jake Dude, the he, he loved yeah. he loves How's it that that's his, his thing right now so i started this with it and i think i saw like, your video you're like you're like taking oh yeah I, I hit him like a full so i get down in a football stance and you know and then he and he while he's gathering himself on the bed trying to get stabilized and right when he gets balanced i dive at him and throw my shoulder into his chest and then drop. <laughs> oh my God. Katrina freaked out the first time she saw me doing that. And he loves it. He gets up and he's like anticipating me yeah. to do it. And he's wanting to do it all the time now. So yeah, it's pretty a funny. Football player. That's, yeah, that's a blast, dude. Yeah. It, yeah. So did, so you guys weren't all together then? No. 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 Oh, okay. I yeah. had a funny moment, like, kind of like that, where I was letting Ethan uh, go a little further into the Truckee River. And so it was like, we found a really cool spot to go swimming and it was pretty calm in, in one part of it. But then there, if you go a little bit further out, it's like fast, it's moving. And, uh, you know, he started to kind of feel that it was like pulling him. And so he thought it was fun. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I don't know, but I don't know if this is a good <laughs> idea. And Courtney's like on, you know, the shore watching the whole thing happen. And I'm like, all right, well, let's do it. I'll just, I'll, I'll come down a little way so you can like go upstream and then kind of float towards <laughs> we me. We have to go, <laughs> you know, I, bro, I hope he it's not almost a huge... got away from me. Dude, oh, no. and he's like, yeah. and I'm like, Oh shit. And I went and like grabbed him out, out of the uh, river. But yeah, I was, it, dude, it's fine. We're fine. We, we, we stretched it a little bit. <laughs> dude, though. dad reflexes are a real, yeah. you ever watch those videos on YouTube? Yeah. Dads catch like the baby. Oh, and like, it's like oh, it's yeah. like life or death. It's like, yeah. and, 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 okay, so sometimes it backfires. So here's what happened to me over the weekend. I'm <laughs> when you pull like a hamstring, bro. Trip. It's like dad reflexes are they're a real thing. Always. But they can, I, I'm I have my phone. I'm standing on top of the the carpet, right? So the uh, rug, so it's soft or whatever, and I slips out of my hand instinctually dad reflex i fucking hit my phone into the wall and onto the hard floor <laughs> <laughs> and like, it would have been better if i dropped it right here you know what i'm saying like, yeah. like oh shit no <laughs> blast it over there so dumb dude i'm uh. such an old man now because uh last night got kids setting off fireworks outside my house yeah and i had to fight the urge to, to go outside them. and tell them to shut the hell up <laughs> You know how well because well, you're in like sleep training right now too, so that's got to be. Oh a, yeah, I got my uh, kids. I'll tell you guys. About, I'll tell you guys about that. But yeah, yeah. You know, baby sleeping, I hear boom, boom. Oh my god! And I'm like, I'm like, man, am I that old guy now? Yeah. That guy that everybody's like, Ugh, he's oh, never having fun. I told you I was the guy that went down like it, there was this local park and there's these kids that are like smoking out in their car and I went up to them like, you take that out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get dude. that stuff out of here. <laughs> you know, I was, that, I was that. I was that kid. He sparks up yeah. with his wife. Like, Later on, <laughs> like, ah, oh, finally they're gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I totally like went right up to the window. No, uh, like, I was no reserve. Just, just pissed off. Just get out of here. Oh, I love it. Uh, get this hey, stuff out of here. So, speaking of the sleep yeah. stuff, right, dude? I uh, no affiliation. I got to give this company a, a shout out called Battelle. You don't so, think it's too early yet? No, no. Yeah. I think it's too early. To no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you guys, <laughs> it's like, dude. Oh, wait, has it been a week? I it's been over, a little that. over a okay. week. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it's brilliant. So the the founder, I don't even know her full name. We call her Miss Megan. She in, she created this system. So this woman 
what's that school Montessori? Yeah. So mm-hmm. she was a, uh, I think, a director for different Montessori schools for a while, okay. and then she's worked with children for her whole life, and she's absolutely brilliant. This program is so brilliant, and I'm gonna definitely butcher how it works, but you use lights and you use what are called mantras where you're, you're singing something to your kid. And essentially what you're doing, and I'm starting to understand the whole thing, is you're showing your kid that it's safe for them to fall asleep on their own because they're get, they get anxious. They, dad's not there. Mom's not there. What do I do? So it's this, this process of allowing them to f- start to feel safe and comfortable. And you also learn the difference between like protest cries, which are 90% of the cries that your kid will give you as a protest. Like, yeah. ah, I don't want to do yeah. this. Versus like they really need you to comfort them. Yeah. But they do show you how to comfort your kid in a way that builds their confidence. Anyway, long story short, my son had terrible sleep to the point where literally Jessica's brain was, brain was getting fried because she deals with the, the, the majority of his sleep, right? It would take her hours to get him to take a nap. Half the time it wouldn't work. She would be up four times every single night. And it was just, it was completely unsustainable. Here we are a week, a little over a week later, my son, it's five to 10 minutes max to go down for a nap, max. Yeah. And and at night to go to bed, it's about five to 10 minutes. And he sleeps almost the entire night. And not once do I have to go into his room. Boom. In fact, when he wakes up, because there's a light that's on that tells him it's time to sleep or time to play or yeah. time to get up, he'll wake up, he'll, he'll, you'll hear a little bit of fussiness. He'll look over at the light. He'll notice, oh, it's still red. And then he'll put his head down. And put himself back to sleep. I'm like, How this bizarre. is a miracle. Ah. So there's a there's a light in the room. Yeah. So there's a light that so it builds like association. 100. Huh? Yeah. So, and they learn right away, dude. Wow. Like after about three or four times, my well, son. We, we're animals at the end of the day, dude. Right? And it literally, you have to. You're just teaching them. Yeah. Like like one. Here's one technique. Again, I'm butchering it because there's so much more to it. But if once I put him down and he starts to protest, cry or whatever, and I tell him. I'm right over there, buddy. I'll be right outside the door. Don't worry about it. And I leave. Yeah. And he cries. Yeah. And I wait. I wait for his cries to really start to elevate. Meanwhile, through the nanny cam, I talk to him. So he th- he knows I'm there and I'm watching. Right. Now, if his cries start to really elevate really high, I walk back in. I literally, like I what's called brush him, but I brush his back. I'm right here, buddy. Don't worry about it. Hey, look, you're totally okay. I'll be right out there. And then you walk back out. Yeah. His cries go up a little bit. And then they go sharply down because he's like, oh, yeah, dad's right there. Like, I could totally relax. Yeah, yeah. It's it's remarkable and it's freaking saving, completely saving. Our now, looking whole life. interesting. Now, because uh, she's not there, right? The, the, this uh, nanny is not there. No. She's coaching virtually, right? No, but these the, the team at Battelle, you hook up a, a camera. Yeah. And, and you allow them to have access to the camera. So while you're doing this process, they can see everything. They'll coach you. Right. So they'll, they'll say, hey, hey, no, you did too much of that or not enough. Yes. Of this, and right. you know what the problem is? Is that so they lay, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, like organize the cry. So there's like a level one, level two, level three, and level four cry. Parents naturally will think a level one or two cry is a three or four. And they'll <laughs> tell you that. Of course. of course. Like, oh, no, no, no. He's just, he's, he's calming down. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Like, but he's crying. No, no, yeah. no. He's, he's totally fine. He's, he's, you know, just give him a second. And then sure enough. And they, you can talk to them in real time. They're watching you, you know, if you, if you want them now, to. Now, obviously, they're not doing anything that's miraculous. It's more the coaching and stuff like that. Looking back now, what would you say were the biggest mistakes that you guys made or that you didn't do that would have helped? Well, think? I think the biggest there was a there's a lot of challenges initially of with the baby. One was was he getting enough milk uh, when you know when she was nursing him? Two was you know he was was he did he need us to be with him and, and comfort him or and in the tradi- the common I guess strategy is for parents and doc our pediatrician told us this just let him cry. The, now that'll work at at some point, but the problem is, and, and instinctually, I don't like it because they fucking their cortisol goes through the roof. They're screaming, they're 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 stressed out, and they eventually, out of exhaustion, have to go to sleep. So that's why we never did that. So challenges. I mean, I think we probably misinterpreted some of his protest cries as like things that needed to be comforted. Yeah, and we just didn't have this like. To support and structure. So, yeah. and I mean, they're so good. I'll tell you what, I told the founder, I would never say this to anybody that I'm doing business with, 
But I said, you're charging too little. I said, you need to charge more. So like, okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I was well, because I'm sure people in that position are pretty desperate, right? So uh-huh. if, you, if you got to a point where you're ready to hire someone to help the, put the kid down, you probably are in a very yeah, desperate spot. It's like spot. a godsend at that point. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I definitely think that... And some kids are harder than others, by the way. Some kids just go right to sleep. But yeah. there's some kids where, man, it can be really challenging. One of, the, one of the probably the best advices that we ever received was just the importance of uh, routine and consistency in the routine in the setup. And it's a lot like what we talk about with preparing before bed for like, oh, yeah. yeah nobody you know nobody really gets ready for yeah. sleep as far as getting the uh, as, as adults we talk about yeah. this it's even more important for children and and, to be protective over it. yeah i, I remember routine. katrina wanted to and I, and I love her for this for for because i was on board too but that she was ready to start it really early the the first time i think which is after a week right week one is when you do the first bath right so once he was in his first bath, we began that building that routine yep. of as soon as he comes out of the bath, he goes on to mom and dad's bed. We dry him off. He gets all his clothes on. We do his lotion, stuff like read that. Book. Then we read book. Even yep. when he didn't understand anything, like it was basically me reading to Katrina, we already started this pattern. Yep. And there was there was rules and boundaries that we set as far as the time that it would, all those those steps would take, what would happen when we put him in the bed, the way the room Bro, was. Bro, do you know so- how brilliant that is that you guys did that? Because what it does, is think about it if the main reason why a baby or a child is having issues sleeping on their own is that they're afraid or they're not sure of their own security creating that structure it's predictable yep. so he literally Provide knows safety for them yeah. totally yeah. it's like imagine if you came to work and everything was in different places and you'd be like you, you know you what's wild uneasy. about it right. too is that every detail matters to this point yes. right so like when i said there's all these different rules every time you deviate from it you're in for an, an, a rougher night exactly and so like one of the things we learned really early on we were so consistent with the way he was on the bed that when he got to an age when he could crawl around and get off the bed we would not allow that like when it was reading time when it's reading time and mommy and daddy are laying here with you just because he can crawl and he can get down yeah. and go get his own but we wouldn't allow it. it's like no 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 and, and we did it in a way that wasn't like you know yelling at the kid or disciplining him it was yeah. just like no 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 you pull him back pull him back so when it comes bedtime it's like he doesn't even see the floor anymore yes. there's there's like the hour before bedtime he doesn't even get to get Dude, on the floor so, so brilliant that. and you know here's the other thing your energy like right. if you <clears throat> think about it this way if you're on a plane, because this is exactly the scenario I thought about. Imagine being on a plane and feeling like crazy turbulence all of a sudden, and then you hear a noise. And imagine if the stewardess or, or the you know the, the people working on the plane flight come out attendant. and freak out, the <laughs> flight attendant. Imagine if they came out and freaked out. Oh, my God. But everybody's going to panic. Yeah. Yeah. Now imagine if they come out and they're super they're smiling and calm. Hey, you know, lots of turbulence. Everything's fine. Like You're reading their energy, right? So if your kid sees you stressed or anxious or not calm, not happy, they're like, why? Oh, yeah. I guess I shouldn't be well, relaxed. I remember when but. we, <clears throat> this was before we even had Max, I was telling you guys this, or I, I speculate that the kids have a, a heightened ability to feel energies because that's only their only way of communication. That's at that a point. great observation. I great. really believe, that, just like you've heard this before, right? Somebody who, who loses their eyesight tends to have like phenomenal hearing yep. because of that, because the other senses are heightened because they're, you, you've lost one or whatever. And when a child can't talk, really, their, their vision isn't completely there very much. I think their ability to feel yeah. is like elevated way more than a lot of people yeah, realize. They're, they're reading <laughs> all of your body language so much more. So and, much and more. And because they're so dependent on you, they probably evolved to be far more intuitive to your cues because... Like they can't do anything for themselves. A baby literally, <laughs> like you put them out in nature, they're, they can't yeah, do anything. Well, when though. they get old, you run into weird issues like this where I'm at the grocery store, right? So we were in Truckee and I was like getting like groceries and I had to get some olive oil. And so uh, I, we went back and, and grabbed it and we get, get to the to the counter and uh, Everett's like, what does virgin all mean? Yeah. <laughs> this is virgin olive oil. And I'm just like, oh, ah, buddy. And then it's only Ethan been chimes once. in. He's just like, oh, it, 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 it means that you can't have babies. <laughs> I'm like, wow. yeah, babies, yeah. Or, or I'm like, well, okay, I guess that's like close enough. Yeah. You know, we're just gonna wrap that up. Yeah. And so we're, it's the checkers checking us out, and and yeah, so you, he's virgin, like, he's like, you know that you can't have babies with this. <laughs> to the checker and I'm just like oh my god that's right buddy uh, you know like, they go right over the checker right yeah oh. they're just like bloop 
<laughs> like whatever. And that's, I was dying inside. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Kids are, kids it's are, baby free olive oil. <laughs> kids are great, dude. They, yeah. I, I love hearing kids talk about things that they don't really understand, but to hear what their understanding is, you know, oh, yeah. it just, oh yeah, it just cracks me up. No, I'm excited for that. That age is when they're so curious, they ask a million questions. I, I with my buddy's uh, daughter, who's three and a half going on four, what I thought, um, I just was, I, she was, uh, she's so intelligent. She's reading already and she's picking up this big vocabulary. And we were talking about when she said, people ask her how she's doing. Oh, I'm fine. Or she uses all these. So I'm trying to teach her new words. And I was teaching her kosher. Now, when one mistake I made, she was like, she looked right back at me and she wants to know, well, what does that mean? So I'm trying to like, oh, she's actually, <laughs> I, mean, I know the you know, slang like version of it, but I actually sense? don't know. The yeah. I didn't know. I had to go back and like, look it up to actually give her the true origin of that. I didn't know what the true origin of kosher was. I thought, right. well, that's kind of how you say oh, things are okay. Or, you know, whatever. Right. That's how I would say it slang. But I'm like, I don't want to be quizzed by this four-year-old and not be able to answer the real answer. So I'm like on my phone, like Googling. What it could. I didn't know what it's from. Do you guys know where kosher comes from? Doesn't it's it mean a, that- It's a Jewish practice. Right? Yeah, the, food- the rabbi like blesses a- so Food has to food? be it has to be prepared in a particular way. It was, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's, a Jew, it's a Jewish thing and that it was, it had to be salted a certain way. And if it, once it was, then it was okay to eat. It had mm-hmm. to be slaughtered a certain way too, right? Isn't um, there a whole process? I don't know if there was a slaughtering process, but I know the preparation of the food and the meat- mm-hmm. And there, I know there's a salting process and then basically saying it's kosher, it's okay. It's been done. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like if someone were to t- get food and, and they say, is this kosher? Meaning has the, all that purifying process happen. And that means, okay. Now the slang use of it is okay. Like, oh yeah, I'm kosher. I'm sure, okay. Sure. But where it derived from was originally from that was saying that the meat is kosher. Yeah. Speaking of meat, <laughs> I know I've talked about this before, but I, I, I want to hammer this home for a lot of people watching and listening. There's so much value, nutritional value and performance value in eating organ meats. Every single time I include Uh, organ meats, so like liver, heart, uh, kidney or spleen into my diet. And here's the thing. You don't need a lot of it. So it's not like I'm eating like a whole it's plate. So dense with nutrients. Oh, well, this, like liver is so dense yeah. that if you ate a lot of it every day, you would it'd, actually get- it be toxic. Right? Yeah, yeah. You get too much vitamin A or too much iron. So, but man, every time I do that, I notice improvements in performance and strength, how I feel. You only need a little bit every single, every single week. Now, of course, the problem is uh, it doesn't taste very good. So yeah. that's always my issue. I always like try and make an effort to do that. And then <laughs> you just get like, I'm like, I don't know if I could really include this in any more meals. It just gets to a point where you're like, Ugh. Yeah. I was trying hard and it just, you know, it doesn't stick. So, so what I do is I'll take uh, like t- 10 ounces of ground beef and I'll add a half an ounce of ground up organ meat and then you can't really taste now you it. can't possibly do this every week can you because i've tried to do this and i'm inconsistent no i throw it. it in uh i'll go through a period where i do it like twice a week for a few weeks and then i don't do so it. so then like if you're not months. are you supplementing during that week or what right. do you do um depends how much organ meat i had um but if i go for like more than a month then i do uh like organ like i do like paleo valley has organ complex so i'll do that so basically they're in capsules so it's freeze-dried you yeah, know, it's a lot easier. Yeah, liver, them. kidney, heart, all that stuff. So you get a lot of the nutrients, and it's it's freeze dried, so it's not. No, I don't know if this is a dumb question or not, but you you are the one who got me to start freezing my fish oil so it stays yeah. better longer. Do you need to do that with those, or is it okay to keep the? No, 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 no. no. So those I, you, they don't repeat on you. Go rancid. Like, yeah, they don't yeah. repeat on you or go bad. No, they're freeze dried, so they they have a long shelf life. Okay. just in capsule okay, form. So. But yeah, that is a good point with fish oil. Like, if freeze it or refrigerate it because it's a food. And it'll go bad if you you ever you ever test oh, that. I've, yeah, I've smelled some rancid uh, fish oil. It's disgusting. Oh, dude, it's, <laughs> especially burping. It it's up. absolutely. Hey, yeah. back back to the kid talk. I was going to tell you guys this. So we were talking about like when kids start to realize certain things. So my son's fifteen. So he's at the age where he knows a lot of stuff, but he doesn't realize that slang and stuff. He thinks like slang and certain words are just hip to like kids his age and that like, <laughs> oh, like, like you don't he's know. He's the only one in the know. <laughs> yeah, dude. So like, oh, that's so great. like we'll say something in conversation and then he'll be like, that's what she said. Like kind of funny. And I'm looking at him like, do you, you do realize everybody here knows <laughs> <laughs> what you're referring to? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, 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 is that just you and your friends oh, on that one? And it'll be, and I don't even want to repeat half the shit. Dude, like, 
it's bad stuff that he that can mean one thing, but it can also mean something That's else. That's hilarious because my uh, I was I was uh, giving Ethan and Everett grief about this because they kept using the uh, you know your mama stuff. And I'm like, you guys understand? Like, you guys have the same mom. Like, <laughs> this, this doesn't work unless it's like one of your friends' moms. Okay, so stop. Yeah. Uh, is yeah, it they, keep rolling, they keep rolling yeah. Courtney into the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's not hey, how it works. Why doesn't anybody say your dad jokes? Yeah, you right? know what I'm saying uh, it's, yeah. it's not a thing. No. It's like, you I know think why? We're just more protective over mom. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because people will laugh your yeah. shit. Yeah, make yeah. fun of my dad. dad like, whatever, <laughs> dude. Yeah, <laughs> don't talk about my, for himself. My mom. Yeah, when I was very like that was a big deal for me. Not that your mama jokes, but like if if I had friends around my mom. And if they made, if they acted a particular way, oh, I I blast them like that's my mom. Yeah, you can't you, you can't say talk a bad about word. my mom. Don't say a bad word in front of my mom. Yeah. My mom used to get a big old kick up. Kick out of it. She's like, oh, my son, I love him so much. He protects me. Did you guys see our uh, our boy Hunter McIntyre winning first place in his race again? Did you see him? He just did. I forget the name of the company that he just. The guy's always that guy's do. a machine. Awesome. Did you also I saw see, him call out Joe Donnelly? That's what I was. That's what I was alluding to right now. So uh, I didn't know if you saw that or not. Did you see that? I did. I saw that. So what is? Did anything happen out of that? I know he kind of. So out what the. What happened was, uh, I guess Joe Donnelly did a post, uh, which, by the way, I can't, I don't see. This is all like me getting it. I was talking to Hunter after the fact to get all the story on how this all played oh, okay. out, right? Uh, so <clears throat> Joe, I guess, did this thing where he was wearing a, a weighted vest and did some like two mile time out of like a you know fourteen incline or something like something, and it was impressive as shit. It was now, like, was it real or did he just? Well, say- I don't. I don't know. He has, but, he has a tendency to say stuff. That's yeah, well, that's what was, which was so mm. great because Hunter called it out because he basically said Joe was basically throwing it out there. I bet nobody can do this, yeah. you know. And then he did, it. and he does that right with his workouts, and then he does yeah. insane amount of sets, and then like calls him, and then everybody tri- fucking kills himself trying yeah. to do it because yeah, yeah. they think he was really doing it. There's right? Always so somebody out there, dude. Yeah. So Hunter like shit. Hunter jumped in real quick. Was like, I'll take that challenge all day. <laughs> that's what I love about him. Yeah. Man. He's like, let's go, you know. And so yeah. he completely went like radio silent. Ended up blocking Hunter over it. And so like that I'm like, dude, you chicken Come shit. Like that. You're gonna put it out. If you're gonna put it out there like that and call every anybody out, and then Hunter calls him out to do something and. And people started throwing money in, which that's how I got involved. Was like, I'll put some money on this. Yeah. Like, hey, I should start a GoFundMe. I would love it. to see. I, I would it. love to see this race. Yeah. So, yeah, dude. I mean, they could, they could make some money off of that's it. That's right the problem sure. with building your whole brand around how badass you are. There's going to be someone out there, right? Yeah. It's always somebody better than you. Always. Like, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, somebody lift more than you. Somebody can run faster than you. Somebody jump higher. Yeah, like, always. And, and Hunter is an animal, dude. That guy yeah. is just. I, I, when you talk about like the most over, competitive dude I think we've met and just is his overall performance I mean the dude is strong he's fast he's got endurance like he's just his a beast. brain produces three times the dopamine that's my theory he makes a shit ton of dopamine when you talk to him when you hear him do what he's doing what he does I know it's uh, like dude you got yeah, like he's just amped always yeah it's like he's got yeah. natural cocaine I'm in always brain envious all of people that have that kind of energy level like, I think uh-huh. I'm pretty high energy and outgoing yeah. and all that but you meet someone like him and he, his personality just dwarfs mine like he is just this as soon as he walks in the room he's, he's lit he's like and it's magnetic. always consistent like yeah. that I've never ran into him where he's just kind of like oh, I'm chill today it's just always high energy yeah I wonder if there's a negative to that though what would be the oh, negatives I'm to I'm sure this yeah maybe well, that high in one direction well I think one of the negatives would be having to live up to that all the time right yeah. imagine if you're like all he wants to chill 90 exactly 90 percent of the time you're like that and then all of a sudden you want to like relax and then everybody what's wrong with you yeah you okay yeah what's and wrong I, I also wonder if those you're high, not really hunter today yeah, yeah if yeah. there's like if there's also uh, opposing low lows you know what I mean? Oh, if, extremes. If, yeah, if he's like that a lot, and that's then a really he crashes. good. That's a really good point, and that's normally how it works, right? So if you if you, he just wears his emotions like on his sleeves like that, right? If you're super positive, happy, like yep. extreme, there's probably the extreme. That's a good question to ask him. I've known yeah. people like that. I've worked with people like that where they go like a million miles an hour for a while and then they crash and then they just, it's like a completely different person. Borderline, uh, you know, like not bipolar, not something medical, but it's pretty, it's pretty dramatic, uh, the shift. Anyway, I want to bring something up. We did an episode where we talked about foot binding Oh, and I yeah. said that they did it in Japan. I thought they did it in Japan, and then I got it's corrected China. that they did it in China. Right. They also practiced it in Japan. Oh, they did. Oh, yes, they oh, did. Man. So when you're wrong, you're still <laughs> right. That's the one Actually, time I was wrong. Is when I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was wrong. So he, out to be wrong. he had to bring that up. Right I now. did. No, know. somebody somebody sent it to me. So somebody from Japan said, "Oh no, they practiced it in Japan as well." Hmm. 
um, not nearly as much as they practiced it in. <laughs> not not quite as popular. Now we know what he did all weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? There's no way. Just not wrong. wrong yeah. I'll find a way to be yeah, right. Let me, let me find, find one <laughs> blog. There's like, yeah, I was going to say, one <laughs> one blog of like five people that did it over in Japan. Yeah, there's like See? one family that, that yeah, you know, moved from yeah, China. Yeah, they, they moved from yeah, China. Yeah, they moved from China. They kept the practice going. So technically, I'm right. Did you guys hear about, let me see if it's, I don't know if this is real or not, but I read about this. And uh, this was in the Red Sea, and there was a guy parasailing. So you guys know what parasailing is, right? So they, they is, hook you up. To is this the, the one where you get pulled behind the boat and yeah. you're in a yeah, uh, you have like a rope parachute and, and a parachute, which, yeah. by the way, is boring as hell. Like I don't know if you guys have ever done this. Really, dude, it's so dumb. You look at I it. I haven't done it, but it, I rope. actually want to do it. And like I just want to. It has every time I've gone gone to do it, I end up getting busy with something else. But I feel like it, you guys are going to go to Hawaii. I feel like in Hawaii, it'd be no, amazing. dude. Like okay, when you no? see it and you're on vacation and you're for with like your girl, a perspective, yeah, yeah you're like, like that would be so cool. Yeah. No, dude, you sit in the back, the boat goes, you float up, and you just float. You, you just look go, around, hey. like, okay, and then they slow down to get back. So in the you water. didn't like it, huh? It's 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 not it's nothing. It's not a big deal. Have you done it, Doug? I've yeah, done it a couple you're times. Flying. I actually oh, enjoyed it. Oh, did you really? Yeah. What's wrong with you, guy? Why'd you enjoy it? <laughs> you're up above the water. You're floating. It's like flying. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm with you, Doug. It's, uh, it's, it's fun. Fun to me. It's now fun. are you? Now are you? You just got flapping your arms after, after Are you few, scared? No, bro. After a few that, minutes, it's it's boring. What are you doing up there? <laughs> your cares? floating is, is nice and quiet. You're like a up child. You can be entertained every two minutes or <laughs> no, something. No, right? it's like I miss my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> <laughs> you up here. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, bro. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no. So it did get exciting for some for one person in the Red Sea. Oh, right. So what happened? Sorry, let's see so it. this guy was parasailing and rope he, cut a 37 year old Jord, uh, Jord, Jordanian man in the Red Sea, and he was hovering above the water. When there's ready for this, a shark Shut up. jumps out of the water and bites off his foot. Shut no way. Up. Yeah, t- no, takes yeah, takes a chunk out of his foot. Wait, this is they true. Have sharks in the Red Sea? Uh, I don't. I guess I'm gonna send this. Is that how not it became the Red that. Sea? I don't know. I'm gonna send this to. I Doug. thought it was like uh, enclosed. It wasn't like. Part of like um, it was a pool, yeah, like it's a big lake almost. <laughs> you know, it's not not really like a, no, it's the Red sea. sea, not the Red Lake. Yeah, uh, but anyway, My no, I just sent great. the link to Doug. So no, the guy's like hovering, and a freaking shark bite. Now oh. is this like current news, or is this like you did last time, where it was like ten years old? No, news? no, no. This is <laughs> this last, happened in the last shark. <laughs> the last shark fact you brought up, I had to go back and research the nineteen ninety. No, no, no. Yeah, this it was, probably was. This was a this was a recent video um, that just happened. Really, Actually, it's a video. You well, can isn't watch this the, video. the Moses Red Sea? Or is this the same one? We're yeah. talking about here? Uh, it yeah. is. Dude. Is, didn't, did he part of the Red Sea, right? Some I demon know. shark. Yeah. <laughs> just, just there, just ready to just eat. Oh. Yeah. Watch, Doug's going to pull it up. Dude, first of all, could you be any more terrified? You don't expect a shark to jump up when you're floating. What's crackle, though? To grab... It's a video, I guess. Oh, is that is this what was on the? On I the mean, link? is that like a streaming platform? I have no idea. Um, um, oh, D- or Sal just sent this to he you. He sent me one. this link, and I'm pulling it. Well, up. while you're looking that up, I'm going to read some numbers because I want to. I want to talk a little bit Ooh, about. Awesome. What if he just reads random numbers, four, five, seven. No, no, no. <laughs> right, I'm going to read. Continue. I wanted to. I <laughs> yeah. wanted. To, I want to have a little discussion around this just to hear what you guys think. Because I just still. Um, I don't know. I'm. I'm super fascinated with what's going on in our economy, just with the the amount of money that we've printed in the last couple of years. What's going on with uh, house prices? What's going on in the stock market? What's going on with jobs? Like gas prices. We're it, it, just we're at a really interesting time, yeah. and typically we we are able to pull from our current situations and go, oh, this is a, a lot like in 1970 something or 90 something, and you know, speculate on what's happening, but this is unprecedented. It is yeah. unprecedented. And so I'm just so curious on where we think. So I want to read some stuff to you guys and hear, sure. hear what your oh, thoughts. Oh, by the way, there's a shark that oh, bites off see. his foot. Watch. <gasps> Watch this. It, look at it. Boom. Jumps out and grabs a, what? Bu- grabs a chunk out of his foot. Now, can you, do you get to sue the parasailing company for that? How's it, who, <laughs> who gets in trouble for that? I have no idea, dude. Wow. But the shark jumped up and grabbed him on the foot. What kind of shark is See, that? See, this is why I don't go you know in the why? water. It thinks it's fly fishing. That's what it looks like, Stupid. right? Stupid. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah, anyway, dangling. All right, okay, yeah, 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 about these numbers. Yeah, okay. Here's here's uh, here's some numbers for you. Okay, so uh, four million. Uh, so two point seven percent people quit their jobs in April. 
Uh, people, uh, and here's some of the reasons why people stuck with their jobs, uh, hated, uh, they hated doing, uh, during the pandemic and now they're, it's pandemics coming out. And so we're like, okay, I want to move on retiring early due to stocks and, and real estate was another reason they speculated, uh, reevaluating career after a year reflection. Um, that was another speculation. Uh, also at the same time, there's a record number of available jobs, 9.3 million, this is also the lowest jobless teens we've seen since 1953 at 9.9% unemployed. Wow. So wow. one out of every 10 leisure, and here's another one here, one out of every 10 leisure and hospital, hospitality jobs is open right now. So over 1.6 million spots are open. I don't know if you guys have seen like the posts from McDonald's and Burger King, like they're yeah. giving incentives to try and get these minimum wage workers to come back into, uh, into those positions. There's no incentive because people are getting right. paid to not work. So that is one of the theories. You think it's just that? Though. I do. You do. I do. If you look at the the majority of people who tend to work these types of jobs, getting free money uh, from the government it replaces it, and mm -hmm. sometimes even surpasses it. I mean, I know in unemployment benefits in California will pay you more, <laughs> oftentimes than. So I've heard people say that I haven't been a part time. You know, I haven't met job. somebody yet where they're. The, I've yet to. You've meet never a, met anybody that said I'm not going to look for a job because then I won't get this unemployment. Well, no, I've, my mother said that to me years ago. I mean, I'll never forget that. And that's what made, changed my whole thought on how I felt about minimum wage. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, I started to piece that together when I was in my early 20s, when I came home to visit my mother one time and she was uh, c collecting unemployment. And I know how smart and capable uh, my my mom is. And, and I know she lives in a small town where it's not very expensive. Back then, I think the rent was like $700 or less mm -hmm. a month to rent the house. And I was like... Hey, why don't you go down to Starbucks and get a job there? I know in no time you'll be in management because of her leadership skills, uh, and then you'll, they get they get benefits and they have decent pay. They start you out and like, and her response to me was, "Well, son, why would I do that?" And she kind of broke down the math for me and said, "You know." She's you know, actually being smart. She technically would make a little more money on Starbucks, but it wasn't enough, right? It wasn't enough to the gap between what she made by not being home or not taking that job, you know, is was a small enough number that it was like, I have all this free time that I can do other things or pursue looking yeah. for a career I'd rather do. Yeah, and then, and then also with some of those numbers, the way that they calculate people who are unemployed is changed. So now they take people who are no longer looking for work, who give up, people are like, ah, fine, I'm not going to even look for work anymore. Yeah. They take them out of that equation. So, a, and a lot of people dropped out of the workforce huh. uh, over the last 20 something years where they're just like, I'm not even going to work anymore. Mm -hmm. Older people and definitely younger people are just like, I'm not doing it. And so they take that out. So when we see unemployment numbers, it doesn't truly reflect how many people are not working. I thought was an interesting stat was them talking about the retirement. So many, there's a lot of people that retired early because of what happened with the stocks and the housing. Yep, that inflated mm. prices and like cool, I can balance. Yeah, imagine oh. if you bought. Imagine if you're in your 50s, but you bought your house 10, 15 years ago. Right. I mean, just and if just you cash that in, if you lived in California, somewhere else, I mean, you could have made a million dollars in a in a 10 year gap. You know, know. depending uh -huh. on where you bought at that time. And so there's a lot of people that are retiring early because of the money that they have now from both I know. Uh, stocks and or real estate. It's crazy. Here's another yeah. thing that they're, that they're talking about doing. They're trying to get, the, the U.S. is trying to get the other developed nations to agree on a worldwide minimum like corporate tax rate. So in other words, they're trying to get all these countries That around. way you can't go out, which is so Why? Popular, right? Exactly. Right. Because the second that you bring the corporate tax rate up too high, we companies do the smart thing. Yeah, they're like, we're and out they, of here. Yeah, they move. Because now, I can't imagine any other countries would even agree to that because part of why they they love that the United States they want does to be competitive. stupid stuff like that is they're yeah. like, great, Apple will come to our country right. and help supply not jobs. If, not if we flex. So not if we say something like, if you don't pass this, then yeah, we're going to make sure, yeah, we're going to yeah. charge you this tariff or we're not going to do that or whatever to use our, our I mean, do you, do you, one world government. Do you, do you foresee Biden getting gangster like that? I mean, that's a Trump move, right? But do you think he's going to do something like that? Or, oh, I think, I, I, or do you I think th this is just all talk. They're no, they're really trying hard to dramatically increase the, the taxes that people are going to pay uh, for lots of things. Definitely dramatically. So I think this is something that they're trying to, to, to do. I know like the, the quote that they said was something like 90% of the countries that they're talking to have agreed to doing something uh, like this. so Yikes. And I hope it doesn't happen because it reduces the capital that's invested in research and development, innovation, 
It's, uh, you know, governments are notorious at terrible management of money. Nobody yeah. spends money worse than the person who pays no consequences. Exactly. What are they going to do for spending it? it terribly? It just doesn't make, if I gave you 10 grand yeah. and I said, here you go, go to Vegas, by the way, if you blow it all, I'll give you another 10 grand. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. You're going to blow every single you know penny. So yeah. Yeah. it's really, uh, I, I hope. Did you get a chance to listen to the Ben Shapiro and Russell Brands? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, damn it. I, I really know, wanted I you to listen to that because I was, I wanted to hear you. I didn't know I would like it that much. Did I talk? I don't know if I brought that you up. Did. The, you I did. I did bring it up on the podcast. Yeah, you so said it was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I really enjoy. I guess I really enjoyed it because, um, I mean, I, I like when my mind's been changed, right? I had, I had, uh, I thought about. Uh, I didn't like. I think a lot of the other things that I'd maybe heard Russell Brand talk about before, and maybe that's because I'd never listened to a full two hours of him mm. have dialogue with someone like that. Um, and so it completely changed my mind on how I thought about him. I was I not, I was not a fan of him until that conversation. Speaking of celebrities and changing minds, uh, Bill Cosby. Oh, oh wow! Holy cow! Did How did this happen, meme, dude? Yeah, yeah because <laughs> dude, like, I mean, the the amount of women that came forward and the like so how so how what kind of lawyer does he have that's what I, I, I have no idea I, think, I don't know i think they called it a mistrial or something or there's new evidence or but he's out dude and that <laughs> is is he out now or is he going to be infuriating out? It, for they let him out um, doug maybe you can find i out. thought it, it was, i think he's out now yeah oh he's out already mm-hmm. Wow. The memes that people are making. I know, oh, man. I shared one yesterday. They're it was so crazy. So good. <laughs> They're so crazy. He's already making jello commercials. I don't know who this lady That's mistrial right. is, but I sure like to buy her a drink. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Wow. I was like too early. I don't yeah, know. Maybe. Dude. Oh God. <laughs> Bill Cosby. Yeah. Wow, I, did shocker. you see Nicole Arbor's uh, comment on it no. about? Because so there's a big movement around free Britney Spears right now because oh. of that whole thing. Oh, right, she goes, right. I, I, I know what you can do is just identify as Bill Cosby. Yeah, dude. I thought huh? that was pretty funny too. That yeah. was pretty clever. What's the deal with Britney? What's up with everybody defending her? Because What's her that? dad has this this crazy. I knew you'd know about yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> I answered too Missing fast. Missing my girls and dying. Think- Need. Maybe it's yeah. this I heard from somebody. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, no, her dad has this crazy contract where uh, or power of attorney over her. Conservative yeah. ship or something like that? Yeah, I forget what it's called, okay. right? But it's something like that. Dictatorship. Or something. Basically, like that, yeah. he has pretty much, he, he has control of her finances. So now I think she released that early on and obviously it's now got to a point yeah. where it's uh it's well, she she's fighting for getting somebody else anybody else to to have this conservatorship over even besides her family i guess it was part of the, of the point right yeah yeah just because they've mismanaged it so much and kept her under their thumb yeah. what a shitty dad i know that's the thing i think it's just totally tarnished she's, their she's what in her late 30s right now right yeah. how old is family she? yeah, yeah. Do you know her exact age? No, I don't know her exact age. You know her age. birthday? I, You're a liar. I do. It's December 4th, but I mean- Son, no, uh, you don't. I think yeah. it's pretty close. Are right? you serious? Look, 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 look. Oh, no. Look at up, Doug. See how close I am. Oh, my God. So they did this all when she like shaved her head and they thought you know she had- They forced her, her to take medication. Oh, I was two days off. December 2nd. Are you was, serious? Look at off. you, dude. <laughs> Damn, bro. <you're, laughs> he did have the so, poster, but I didn't know you were that. That is so creepy. Do you still Now, do you still think she's like super hot? I mean, uh, I you when you have when you're I don't think she's she's had a hard hot. road. Uh, yeah, exactly. Say, right? <laughs> I have some compassion. Yeah, Thank you, Justin. Yeah, I have some compassion for you. Know what I'm saying. I mean, you know, if I loved her back then and we were married, she's so a nice I lady. Still love her, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So she's but, uh, a, little, uh, a little worn, rough, rough past uh, decade or so. You know, what couple saying? bumps but, in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Builds character through, though. She's been through some she's speed shit. bumps. Yeah, dude, she does look like she's been through a lot, yeah. bro. So I feel, you know, I mean, I know some people are like, oh my god, how can you feel sorry for celebrities and this and that? But you know, a lot of these celebrities, I always feel for celebrities that became famous as children yes oh bro yeah, that's, because, that's the point right because there. if yes. you if yeah. you uh, and i don't, don't and, know any better and you dude. should have compassion like for all the people that are just hate on people that have lots of money just because they have a lot of money i know it's like it, well and all the predators you see surrounding them like as they get so famous and they're just like just going and because blowing a, the money everywhere as a kid you don't know any better i mean no. i'm sure if you asked me when i was 12 would you want to be famous and rich I, my quick answer would be yes you know, definitely. Yeah. What, you know, just like most kids would probably say, because at that that time, all you're thinking about is jet skis and traveling the world. Yeah, it'd be and, like yeah, if you asked yeah. a, a seven year old, "Do you want to eat candy all day?" Yeah, long? exactly. Oh, big yeah. Pool. Right. But as an adult, you know what a stomach ache and how much problems that would cause, and that would be terrible, right? Well, that's why I always feel for these these kids that become celebrities so early because they don't learn so many life lessons, and then the, when they do start to learn lessons, it's they have this distorted image of what real life yeah. is like. So. I would, I would, that's the, the worst possible thing. I think like I don't show or talk about my kids too much on social media because 
my fear would be, let's say, you know, the small chance that mind pump explodes and then my kids are known for being my kids and now they have attention and fame. And what does that teach them? That they're important for nothing that they did, that they're important for either how they look or what their dad does or whatever. And then when you fall from that, that is a hard fall. So if you're like a, a, a child star and you, you know, for two or three years, you're like beloved by everybody. Everybody says yes to everything that you ask. Yeah. They're, everybody thinks you're great. Then all of a sudden you're not popular anymore, which is what happens with celebrities. Imagine the, the what that feels like as a kid. Yeah. Why doesn't anybody like me like they used to? Oh, yeah. What happened? Your whole identity is wrapped into it. Oh and yeah, just dude. Taken away from you. And yeah. of course they, they they turn to drugs and alcohol and you know promiscuity and all that other shit. Hell no. Find me one child star that didn't have tr challenges with that. It's pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Do, do you guys know any? I don't know any that I have not been through like the ringer as far as like rehab. Oh, no. and, like really, yeah. really. Like do, how many kids do we or how many people do we know that were like childhood stars like her? That are pretty for for what you know a pretty normal. Celebrity. I don't know any. Yeah. Now some of them came out of it okay, mm -hmm. but I don't know any that didn't have like, like a crazy. No. Yeah. That's the. I tell you what. The last thing I would wish upon my kids. Mario Lopez maybe. It's, <laughs> what's his What's his background? What's his really? Story? Macaulay Culkin seemed a little I mean, I'm, normal. I mean, I'm only basically Macaulay Culkin. He's weird. Have he's, you heard him on uh, Rogan? Yeah. He was oh actually, no, he was on Rogan. Yeah. I mean, he was actually pretty measured, but yeah, he. I mean, he admits that it was all crazy, like the whole thing, the whole ride, like he. It was just like this this whirlwind experience and didn't know what he yeah. was doing, but like kind of got his stuff together later on in life and, and pulled it back together. But like it, I, I was actually surprised that he wasn't like just really weird, you know. Did they it, talk about the Michael Jackson thing at all? <sighs> yeah, there's nothing weird about that. He, that's the thing. He I think he spend the night over barely there. did. Like it, he was just oh, a really? friend and like he was trying to sure. like keep this whole dividing he still he still stands he by stands that, by that whole oh, like i you yeah. know didn't see none of it <laughs> you're not buying it or what no dude come on bro what grown man sleeps with another kid with, with the, the jesus juice at right? that yeah. is not yeah. your kid in the same bed and i mean, it, I I, mean yeah but also what a i mean what a master plan that would be to make sure you befriend somebody that is a kid that has got that much power and fame, and that could be an advocate for you, so you could get away with a bunch of other bullshit. Oh, so what too, you're though. saying is that child predators are also very planned, Michael Jackson right? had a type. Well, yeah, uh, often yeah. that's exactly I what know. I'm saying. I'm I saying know. that if you if he's a a predator, like yeah. like many people believe that he is, right? That he is a predator. Then uh, wouldn't it be a pretty smart strategy to befriend a famous child? And not do anything uh, promiscuous with them, so that when people ask, they're going to think this kid is telling the truth. And all these nobody kids, right, who you know, would be wanting his money. That's, I mean, that would be my theory on yeah. something like that. Yeah, no, that makes uh, sense. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't he come out by now and say that? I mean, Michael Jackson's long gone, and it, I because mean, because then he'll go back and what he said before, maybe. Yeah, I was a kid. Sense. I was traumatized. There's a lot of ways out. Yeah, for I that. guess you're right. You know what I'm saying? To I me, it, the the most logical thing is that okay, if if he was a predator that would be a very smart thing to do is to keep yeah. someone who's young and close to you and that is saying, no, we've always been great and nah, we do sleep in the same bed, but we're like friends. It's not like one of you have never slept in the front with another guy or what like that, like when you were a young hey, kid. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Well, yeah, when, you're, when you're the young kid, <laughs> as, the, as the adult, that's fucking weird. You know I mean? <laughs> For the kid, he don't know any different. Right. Right? You know what I'm saying? The kid thinks that's normal or whatever yeah. like that. They, they, doesn't, they don't know the difference. So. Know, that's weird. I, I'm always like, what parents left their kids at Michael Jackson's house to do that? Dude, well, did you ever, what, did you guys watch that crazy two-part documentary that no was, man i watched uh, some of I it watched, and then it, had it made me just ill so i watched it and because i said the same thing too like i like how could you be a parent and do that and they they talk about like that's how, like their ticket to fame and they're like oh, well yeah, not we only that it. but like it didn't happen it wasn't like michael jackson rolled up saw a kid at a no, concert he builds like, trust yeah he built trust with the family and then they feel like he's a yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and imagine that you everybody stay in the same hotel then eventually yeah. the kid stays so what hotel, i after man. i watched that documentary i did have yeah. a little bit better understanding of like how a parent could allow that to happen not to say that i would right um, but some of these kids were young dude yeah. I don't want to let my six year old sleep over anyone's house. I yeah. don't care. He's six years old. Maybe grandma and grandpa. That's it. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, some of these people built uh, that strong of a relationship where they felt that connection to my Plus, I think you have a bit of a self selection bias of people who want to live vicariously. Yeah, to totally, totally. Get them famous. Totally. So you they'll, know, they'll yes, like, dude. you know, stretch their. 
for sure. Yeah, I mean, you've got parents are... that are taking their young yeah. kid to multiple concerts and their fans themselves. So you're right. I All think right. there's a little self now, Speaking of crazy stuff, I got to tell you guys about this TikTok influencers that almost died. <laughs> yeah. oh, God. Really? Yes. Uh, so and the, and the world rejoiced. Yeah. So yeah. there's this. <laughs> so, so, so there's these these TikTok Sorry. influencers who picked up this flower, which is a real thing, and we're just smelling the hell out of it and talking about how delicious the smell is and it's so amazing and this is so cool. Not realizing that these women accidentally drugged themselves because they literally were smelling one of the scariest hallucinogenic narcotics known to man. What? what? So there's this flower uh, that's poisonous and it's got, I forgot the name of the compound. It's called Devil's Breath is the name of the flower. Never heard of this. And it contains uh, a compound called sc uh, scopolamine, which is a very, very scary hallucinogenic where if you breathe it in off the flower and you, you smell enough of it, it'll put you in this paralyzed hallucinogenic state. So you're like frozen and you're just freaking the shit. Oh my God. Freaking the fuck that's out. And that's what happened to these girls. They went through the night and had a f just terrifying night. And then the next day found out that was because they were smelling this big yellow poisonous flower what? on TikTok. <laughs> that would have that would have been a great time to put wow. a commercial from you flowers.com in there, dude, right there. Yeah. I don't think you buy I don't know if you want to associate <laughs> yeah, 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 that with like the, the, the positive actually, flowers. If you could send devil's breath flowers to someone, yeah. that would make you millions of dollars, wow. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Who's sending me flowers? I'm an asshole. Nobody likes me. I haven't seen the final I haven't seen the final numbers on that, right? So the campaign's not done with like I think I told our audience if we were gonna work with uh, from you flowers.com or not. Um, but it's there's the stuff starting to trickle in now. At first, I thought it was we had a terrible response from our audience that yeah. you guys were all but you slacking dudes, bad out people there, right? that don't, yeah. don't send flowers, yeah. right? So, and but Look recently, I've been getting more and more messages of people going, Oh man, actually, it was really great, it's great service, can't believe how cheap it was. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's starting to trickle in now. So, we'll see if if, it, if we continue on with yeah. them or not. Speaking of uh, of our sponsors, um, I've been drinking a lot of the. Have you guys, uh, I know you guys, go, you guys go on and off with the immunity from uh -huh. uh, Organifi, Organifi uh -huh. the orange flavored immunity. Yeah. Man, I haven't had it in a while. It just tastes good. It's I just good. like putting it in a big cold jug of yeah. water. And then just sipping on it, and you have the all the. Now, the, is there any? Uh, is, there's no uh, adverse effects from taking that on a regular no, basis, right? I mean, no. what's what's the main ingredient that's well, in there got, that's it's beneficial? Well, it's got vitamin D, to, it's got zinc, vitamin C, but then it also has uh, compounds that help boost the immune system. But it's nothing that, if you drank on a regular basis, would cause problem so it's actually designed to be drink have you ever oh, looked yeah. at like everything that's in there and said what can try to compare it to like what you would have to do naturally to get all those the, all those things like in food like if you were to try and put put well, a cocktail together yourself well vitamin d and zinc are often uh nutrients that we miss so right. that that alone is, is challenging like right. vitamin d i'm always trying to seek those out yeah yeah, yeah. Here's the crazy thing about vitamin D. I also supplement with five to ten thousand i use of it every day it's still early. and i get my blood tested yeah. Two or three times a year, and my vitamin D comes in right in the fucking middle, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's five to ten thousand a day. <clears throat> so there's a big individual variance in terms of how well your body, you know, produces and, and utilizes and stores vitamin D. Yeah, now, do you, have, got, do you know why you think that is for you? Like, I, I have a maybe theory. it's because I'm dark skin, and so when I go out in the sun, I don't convert vitamin D as, as well as like Justin. So and, similar. I, so my the theory on myself was that as a kid, I was in the sun all the time. And probably didn't have any of that skin issues or anything like I have now. Yeah. And then as I got older, I just so my body I think got adapted to getting so much of it. And then now I don't give it nearly. I enough. wonder. That's a good point. Right. I mean that I don't know. So it got really good at managing the am incredible amounts of sun you got. Yes. But now that you don't get nearly as much sun, now you're deficient. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, I guess. I don't know. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying this episode. Head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free information on training nutrition. We even have free stuff for personal trainers to make you a better and more successful personal trainer. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Mo Strength Gains. Is there any instance where partial reps are better than a full range of motion? Oh, good old partial reps versus Ooh, full range of motion. Are they worth anything? Argument. <sighs> to be continued. You know, back, I brought this up before, but in the 90s, there was a book, early 90s that came out. I think it was called, uh, I don't remember the name of it. I'm trying to remember, but Paul DeMeo was on the cover. He's a bodybuilder who passed away. And in this particular book, the author promoted heavy partials over full range of motion. He said, if you do a partial with lots and lots of weight, the load stimulates more muscle in the full range of motion. Anyway, it turned out to be wrong. Nobody, nobody builds more muscle that way. So generally speaking, and studies support this, full range of motion 
is superior. Now, are there cases where partial range of motion is better? Absolutely. If you're an athlete and there's a specific range of motion that you need yeah. to train. Uh, yeah, that'd be the only example I was going to bring up. Yeah, so like if you're a basketball player, full range of motion squats aren't going to benefit you as much as partial range of motion squats because when you're jumping, you're not going all the way down and jumping up. No, you so want to generate power in, in you know, like a more of a, like, I mean, it's it's definitely a partial squats kind of situation. Like yes. You're going to do that in terms of like going all the way down to a squat. You're never going to really see that. Yes. Now, the, the other way is if there's a, part of your range of motion that is just disproportionately uh, not stable or you just need to improve it better. So like, let's say for example, when you do a squat, when you get down to the bottom, you just lose a lot of stability and strength and it's disproportionate to how much you're supposed to lose when you do the bottom, right. when you're at the bottom. Well, then it might be good to do kind of bottom position squats where you squat down to the very bottom and you come, come up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, right. Or yeah. if you have issues with lockout, like power lifters will do Sometimes these lockout bench presses to help with lockout. But besides these specific uh, ways of applying partials, um, besides that, full range of motion generally will give you better. And of course, it's all within the context of good form, good technique, good stability. Full range of motion with bad stability is just a recipe for injury. So as long as everything's good... Generally speaking, you're just going to get better overall results. Overall yeah, it's results. rarely I, it's rarely ever uh, as good. It's definitely, I don't see it better unless it's very specific to that. Now, I can see where um, it's less detrimental if you utilize it in certain cases. For example, if I do, if I'm training, let's say, uh, like 21s are an example of this, right? So a bicep curl, 21s, everyone's probably done these before where you come down halfway up seven times then you do start at the bottom halfway up seven times yeah, and then you, do, then you do seven full range of motion so i, I find that uh, there it's less detrimental if you also include full range of motion with that sure. training session right so if you did a, a an exercise where you're doing you know deep squats for two or three sets and then you have one set where you go like these short pumping right. sets I don't think that's going to hurt your overall range of motion. And if I'm just trying to maybe, let's say, chase the pump because it's a hypertrophy phase mm -hmm. of training, I see some value in that. Do I think it's better than full range? No, I don't think it's better, but I think it's less detrimental as long as you are including the full I range. I think that's a good point because uh, you know you want to fight the – the bad patterns that may occur if you get really into the, the the partial rep type of mentality, which you know in bodybuilding, obviously you know you could feel a lot of the pump from that and and uh, you know get the blood flow from that, so you feel like you know your muscles are really filling up. But then again, now we're we're slowly sort of degrading our range of motion and capabilities, and two, you're not going to be able to generate force in certain areas of these movements that you really need to. So to be able to include the full range with the partial is really essential. Well, you bring up a great point too with bodybuilding. Like, I mean, you guys probably experienced this uh, more so in having Mind Pump than you ever did before when you guys hired these models to shoot for our totally. programs, right? So not, not to call anybody out in, in our uh, specifically, but, you know, we've hired a bunch of models to shoot for the programs when we refaced them years ago. And of course, we hired bodies that look aesthetically pleasing for camera and stuff, and not thinking that oh, these these guys that have been training for twenty years of their life will have problems doing like an overhead press or a very basic movement, uh, but they did. Yeah. I remember Justin coming. <laughs> was, I remember Justin texting me like, "Bro, <laughs> what did you do to me here? I can't I can't get these guys to do this this exercise. It's like it, it looks terrible. I don't know what to do. Am I going to scratch it or am I going to sub it for somebody else doing it? Well, you would never guess that because you look." Look at their body and their body yeah, looks they got an amazing. impressive body but they can't uh, produce that movement and it's no. because they've trained you know this and we're specifically talking about the two exercises that come to mind that i remember justin texting me about was overhead press overhead press and then the uh tricep extensions behind the head yep so being able to keep the dumbbell behind and your, fully extend yeah well and also be able to pull requires a lot of shoulder mobility yeah yeah it yeah. has a lot of shoulder mobility to be able to pull your elbows back and not hit your dumbbell against your head so or you have to modify and arch your back like crazy in order to do that and so a lot of these bodybuilders that look uh, great but because they do so many of that shortened range of motion they they lack yeah, the and, mobility. and again generally speaking uh full range of motion builds more muscle anyway in average people sometimes we look at bodybuilders and we use them as an example uh but the problem is you're dealing with super genetically gifted often anabolically enhanced uh athletes whose bodies respond 
way more to resistance training than the average person. So it's hard to say, oh, that's that's what's good because that's what works on this, you know, 0.1%, uh, you know, genetics uh, type of a person. Yeah. But yeah, full range of motion. There's also the sliding filament theory. I'm not going to get super detailed in it, mostly because I can't explain it very well. Yeah. But essentially, muscle the fibers yeah. slide across each other. And, and full range of motion means you're getting more of this motion. And each time it slides across and it contracts, these little attachments will form and break. That's what causes a little bit of that muscle damage and that soreness. The fuller the range of motion, the more you're going to get this action. The shorter the range of motion, the less you're going to get of it. So that's why fuller range of motion. It's one of the theories as to why full range of motion in studies tends to build more muscle than short range of motion, even if there's lighter weight with the full range of motion. Next question is from Estella Moshkow. Of all the forms of cardio, which would you guys recommend? Well, this really depends on who I'm talking to. If you're like a performance person, uh, then that's going to be very different than if you're just a general health uh, and I want to be lean kind of person. Uh -huh. So if I'm talking to the general health, I just want to be lean. I want to maintain good health. I also do resistance training uh, regularly. Yeah. Then the one form I'm going to recommend is walking. Yeah. It requires the least skill and technique. So I'm not worried about whether or not you can't run or cycle or swim properly. You're probably not going to hurt yourself walking. So that's number one. It's easy. You can do it anywhere. Um, and it provides lots of health benefits. Um, you know, studies show that just regular, consistent walking throughout the day has tremendous uh, health benefits. Now, if you're an athlete and you want to perform, it's a whole different ball game, uh, especially if I'm looking at a specific sport. Like if you're a runner, what kind of cardio am I going to recommend mostly? Running, right? Yeah, Cyclist, yeah. cycling, uh, right. and so on. So it really does depend a lot on the person. I, I always feel like we have such a hard time with these questions. Uh, ju we just touched on something the other day about cardio and I was going through the YouTube comments and uh, you know, somebody said that these guys really hate cardio, <laughs> don't, yeah. don't they? So wrong. And it is so wrong. And so I'm, I'm always trying to think like, okay, how do I communicate this better so people understand that I don't hate cardio? Um, I just, what I, what I know is that most people, that we don't know enough about this person who's asking this question. Of all forms of cardio, which would you guys recommend? I know nothing about this person. I don't know what their goals are. Way too generic. It, way, it, and it's so, so it's really tough to answer this for this person and people that are thinking in the same, the same place as this person is, right? So like to your point, Sal, like what you're trying to get out of it or get out, it matters everything. So if you're just want to be healthy and you know what would you well yeah of course then walking makes them move more yeah makes the most sense right yeah activity period if your goal which most people's goal is by the way lose body fat right to get leaner i think that it's a terrible form and and the reason why it's so terrible is because almost everybody that's ever sat in front of me and hired me to get them leaner and in better shape what's going on with them nutritionally and activity wise to introduce cardio to that person is a terrible thing to do at that point. At that point, they're normally under eating nutrients that their body needs over consuming crap that they, they don't need. Mm -hmm. Their metabolism is slowed from years of being sedentary and under eating than over eating perpetuate the problem. Right. And so then I get somebody who, and I look at their diet and I see, wow, this, you know, this male should be able to eat 3,000 to 3,500 calories and maintain a fit body. But what I'm looking at right now is somebody who eats 24 to 2,500 calories or so, doesn't move heartily at all. And they're overweight. Yeah, and they're overweight. And me introducing cardio to that person they're is- going to lose muscle. That's they're going right. to slow down the metabolism. That's exactly what's going to happen. And so I'm only working against what their real goal is. Yeah. Now, if you're somebody who w likes to do cardio- and uh, you find it as meditative, you uh, feel the energy throughout your day because you do it, and then have fun with it. Then my answer to this question is change it up. Swim for a while, row for a while, walk on the treadmill for a while, walk outside for a while. Like, And the whole novelty principle is going to be true here. So the, there's a lot of benefit to doing all those different forms. But just you need to really understand clearly what your desired outcome, what your goal is, mm -hmm. and why you're asking a question like yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, the general answer is your personal preference. Like, it, Honestly, it doesn't matter at all. Like sure. uh, To me, it's just about uh, creating more more opportunities for activity right. and you know, that's going to benefit you long term anyways but the, the the point is to your fat loss uh, point is most 
clients coming in, that's their thought is I have to get on the treadmill. I have to be on there at least an hour if I'm going to get any kind of progress with eat, like chipping away at my fat loss, which, you know, we just know there's a better way to do it and yeah. approach it. Uh, and for me, like I, you know, working with athletes, I, I want to make it as specific as I can to having that translate to their specific sport on the field. And so if, if we're talking about like football, for instance, where I'm in it right now, you know, I'm looking at opportunities for, you know, 20 yard sprints, you know, 50 yard sprints. Like if you're a skilled player, like hundred yard sprints and, you know, having that kind of explosive uh, endurance so they could, you know, on any kind of moment, just boom, burst and run, but then come back and be gathered and, and not be completely yeah. gassed out. So uh, it, it, you got to look at those things of like how this is going to benefit me in my pursuits of these different type of activities. No, that's a great point. Like if you have somebody who like, lo like one of their favorite things to do, I have a client like this right now, she's getting ready to go. She signed up to hike half dome, right? So it makes sense to train that person to do something that is that's going to mirror the the time that the, the half dome would take to get up there or the, the legs, the, the elevations, the, yeah, the hikes. Yeah, exactly. So carrying a backpack. Right. Or... So if you're in, if there's certain sports or activities that you're into, there's, there's modes of, of cardio that would match that, that would carry over to that. That makes sense to do that. But knowing your goal is so important here and it understanding is. what you're trying to get out of it. And I just, I think where we come off is cardio haters. It's not that, it's that 90% of the clients that hired you or hired us wanted to get leaner, build muscle, lose body fat, and where they're normally at in their their current like state, that's like the worst thing they could do. It is. Yeah. And I'll tell you, look, I, I, just to put, you know, like a nail on that, right? If your goal is general health, and lo general health longevity and body composition and aesthetics, and you also are not going to work out every single day, so you're not a fitness fanatic, here's what your routine should look like. The base should be strength training. That's the base. So most of your efforts should be towards building muscle. It's a wonderful buffer against all of the issues of modern life. It speeds up your metabolism. It's very pro youth hormone producing. So that's t testosterone in men and growth hormone in men and women. It's good to balance out estrogen and progesterone. So that's the base. Then what's above that, that is less of a degree, daily activity. So now what do you do on top of that? Every day I do two or three 15 minute walks. Boom. Now that's perfect. Okay. What's above that? Now I also incorporate some kind of a mobility or flexibility component, you know, two or three days a week, I'll do some stretching or some active type of, you know, uh, you know, mobility type of work. Now you've got kind of the perfect type of routine, but the base should be the strength training. Why? Because for that person, the most bang for your buck, the most you're going to get for the time spent by far is with uh, the resistance training. That's probably why sometimes people think we're anti-cardio. No, it's because mm -hmm. the most people we're talking to, we know it's going to give them the best results. We know the amount of time that they want to devote to the gym. We know we've seen time and time again what happens to people when they do the wrong kind of exercise with those kinds of goals. And so in those cases, we're always going to make the case that strength training and resistance training should be the foundation of your routine. Next question is from James Horton, 83. What are the benefits of training first thing in the morning compared to afternoon and evening? All right, so so we can talk about the physiological benefits, but really the big difference between these times consistency. Is, it was just psycholo it's psychological, which consistency falls right right under. So uh, I'll tell you what, generally speaking, okay, and again, this is I'm talking to the average person or to, to to most people. In the morning, here's what you'll notice if you work out in the morning: your workout performance will be. Not as good. That's a fact. I'm, I'm not going to be as strong. I'm not going to perform as well if I work out at 7 a.m. versus if I work out, you know, in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. However, if I work out in the morning, people who do this are less likely to miss workouts. Why? Because it's the first thing of my day. So there's less opportunities for shit to get in the way of me doing my workout. So I'm way more consistent. This is the primary reason why I work out first thing in the morning. I have kids. We have a business. I got all kinds of stuff going on. And I know if I do it in the afternoon, there's a lot of opportunities for things to get in the way for me to miss my workout. But if I do it first thing in the morning, far less opportunities for me to miss it. So that's the main reason. And here's the second one. This is a great psychological benefit to working out in the morning. When I work out in the morning, man, I am ready for my day. I come in here, I podcast better. I'm sharper. I feel energized. So the rest of my day tends to benefit. Now, later in the day workouts, better performance. I mean, no doubt about it. I'm way stronger. I'm 10% at least stronger working out in the afternoon. I get better pumps 
in the afternoon. It's just, it feels better. Does that translate to more muscle, less body fat? I think because of the consistency of the morning workouts in comparison to the effectiveness of the afternoon workouts, it's a wash to be quite honest because I miss no workouts when I work out first thing in the morning. So that's about it. Now, if you're somebody, if I'm training you and now here's where we get some, like where it starts to become more, more, you know, more variants. If I'm working with you and you're my client and sleep is an issue for you, I'm not going to have you work out first thing in the morning uh, because I don't think it's smart to trade sleep for exercise. If you have hormone issues, I'm not going to have you work out in the morning. So if you're a woman and you're going to hire me and your your HPA axis dysfunction, I'm not going to have you work out in the morning. I'm going to have you have a nice relaxing morning and I might have you work out in the afternoon. Um, so those are just some examples, but I think the big difference really is about the the psychological aspect. Yeah, I would the the biggest physical detriment I would say to working out in the morning is simply that is interrupting your sleep. Right, yeah. if you are you find that that's the best time for you to work out because you have the most time available then, but that also cuts into your eight hours of sleep, and now you're getting six or five or whatever, and you're exhausted and you just push through it, mm -hmm. right? Because you can push through it and then feel good afterwards. And don't mistake that, by the way, of feeling good because that's just your body trying to respond to what you just put it through. So mm -hmm. that's the mistake I think some people get is like, whoa, when I get done, I feel really good. I mean, I feel horrible getting there and this and that, and I do it and then <laughs> yeah. I feel amazing. Like stress people. hormone high. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's just your cortisol shooting through the roof and you feel if you feel amazing. And don't, don't mistake that for your body is, is loving that or liking that. So I think that... You know that's the biggest thing you got to look at. Look at if you're going to be training in the morning time. Um, but yeah, it, and I, I know we keep hammering the consistency consistency thing down, but you have to understand that how much that plays a factor in your success. It's the number one factor number one. of all things: yeah. diet and training program and all these things that we want to talk about. Exercise selection, routine, blah 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 blah. Nothing trumps consistency you consistently doing something is far better than nothing at all so whatever one of these things it were morning or afternoon yeah. you can be the most consistent is that's the answer yeah, to however this. you find that in your schedule where you can just map that out knowing specifically i'm gonna do this at this specific time a lot of people do find it's the first thing in the morning because it is uh that very first ob objective that you're you know placing yourself in like this is what i my intention of the day starts here and you know that does have a lot of benefit to it because now the rest of my day like i do get a, a quite a bit of a mood elevating effect from that too yeah. like working out in the morning which i like but i don't like that i can't <laughs> i can't train at the intensity i can in the middle of the day yeah. which is really where i do feel a lot more of a performance boost so i i kind of weave back and forth uh with the two options Based on if my consistency has fell, I'll go back to mornings and try and go, you know, first thing. Uh, but then if I have an opportunity in the day, I'm going to take it because I want to see what my body has been able to do. Now, as far as the performance is concerned, yes, it's true. Studies will show you'll perform not as great early in the morning as you will maybe later in the afternoon. However, body will adapt. Yeah, you do. You do. You do get better at it. So yeah, I, I will say I still perform better in the afternoon. But I don't perform as badly in the morning as I did as I used to when yeah. I first started doing it. Now my performance in the morning's not too bad. What my would you say it to... takes? I know it's very individual, but what would you say it takes the average person to kind of acclimate to that? Months. Like, yeah. Oh, months. 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 Yeah. So. Five, four, like five, three, six oh, months. Okay. Oh wow, that long. It takes a while, dude. dude. Bro, waking up in the morning. First off, you have to wake up earlier than you used to, mm -hmm. and then being physical and pushing yourself. To somebody who's never done that before, it takes it takes a little while. Yeah, you know? I think the key, I mean, and you're the more consistent one with this, correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you transition and you're and it's tough and it's going to be probably tough and tired, is disciplining yourself to go to bed earlier. Because I, I would see yes. that would be the probably the biggest challenge for people. For me, that would be the biggest you're challenge. You're right. right? Yeah. I've, I've allowed myself to stay up to 11 or midnight almost every single night, but... If you're getting up at five o'clock in the morning, right. going to bed at midnight is a terrible habit to have. Yeah, you're one hundred percent right. You you have to prioritize that that evening as well. But I, I look, I noticed this as an as a young gym manager before I had kids, before I had all the responsibility I have, when I was literally living and working in the gym all day, so I could literally work out kind of whenever I wanted, which and so I did. I'd work out at like one or two p.m. That's what I did for years, by the way. One or two p.m. was my workout time. It was a slow time in the gym. It also worked out great because, like I said, it's early afternoon. But here's what I noticed. When I would manage gyms, if I came in the morning at 6 a.m., which I routinely would do, I would routinely get in there early so I could get there before my staff set up or whatever, 
it was always the same people in the gym. The most consistent members that you'll see in a gym mm -hmm. are the morning crowd. Always. The same exact crowd. They're in there. They're yeah. hardcore. They know each other. They all work out very consistently. The evening crowd, boy, does that fluctuate like crazy. But it was that, I swear to God, I would come in at 6 a.m. and I knew I was going to see the same 30 to 50 people you know, working out in my gym. So, and that's when I really picked up on it. Like, oh, it's the morning mornings are, are, that's great for consistency. Next question is from John Draker. What is your biggest regret from your early weight training days? Oh, geez. Well, I think you, for, first we have to reword that because I don't think you, any yeah, of us have regrets. Well, if you could go back and train yourself as a kid, like yeah, what would you say? Yeah, so I think that's a better way to word this because I think that we all agree that uh, all of our decisions, good or bad, have led us to where we are today. And I completely uh, accept that and I'm, I'm happy for that, right? So, but if I were to go back and do something different in my training routine, right? Or tell, you know, 20 year old me who's really just really starting to get into hardcore training, here's some tips, Adam, you should know that you'll mm -hmm. find out later on. The big one that comes to mind right away is squatting and deadlifting. Yeah. And overhead press, those three movements that are the staple and foundation of all of my routines was virtually non-existent for the first almost 10 years. I mean, yes, a little bit here and there, but not consistent. Not like now. It's completely flipped where mm -hmm. it was, I used to squat. I would never deadlift it, so, that was, so for sure that. But uh, squatting and overhead pressing was a very infrequent thing that happened in my routine. And my my thought when it did go in there, it was just to change things up because I love doing the leg press and lunges and leg extensions and leg mm -hmm. curls and all the machines when it came to my leg stuff and overhead. And when it came to overhead pressing, I was rarely ever doing barbell overhead press. It was, you know, dumbbell stuff, lateral raise stuff, machine stuff. Um, so those three movements, um, I always benched. I think every, every most, most all kids or guys bench, you know, that was something I, I did that. But if I were to go back, it would be to squat, deadlift, barbell, overhead press, those three movements, um, way more than what I was doing. I, I agree 100%. Now, I was fortunate enough to be taught by some local power lifters, some older guys that really jacked, that told me to focus on those lifts. And so I did those lifts. But what I also did was I also threw in a bunch of garbage exercises. So it's like I did everything. Mm -hmm. And I would have been way better off. Just focusing. On yes. That. Had I took out you know all these machine exercises and just focused on uh, those and maybe some additional you know, compound lift, uh, maybe accessory movements, but gotten rid of all the other stuff I would have done so much better uh, with my training. The other thing I, I, I would I would do if I could go back in time is I would talk to younger me during that whole over-the-counter designer steroid pro-hormone uh, oh, okay. time. This is back when there was the laws were very interesting, and if it wasn't explicitly banned, you could sell. They called them pro-hormones, but make no mistake, they were designer steroids, like Superdrol is a famous one. Halodrol is another one. These are in the early 2000s, and we were just – popping them like they were, you know, like they were Skittles because they worked so well and because we weren't told that necessarily that's where they were. We thought, oh, it's a pro-hormone. Your body converts it to whatever, and if it doesn't, then that's okay. No, no, no. These things were legit, and I should have known better because when you take them, you can tell, and when you go off, you can definitely tell. And uh, I'm sure that did some – who knows what that did to, you know, my – my hormone production, my future hormone production. Yeah, I, I can think of a few things. Um, definitely deadlifting was not in – uh, the regiment. I didn't, I mean, I did power cleans and, and would take it from the floor. And so it had some, you know, carry over with that. But um, if I would have really built up the base of uh, strength with deadlifts too, on top of all the other like core lifts, I think that would have helped quite a bit. But um, one of the, the main things was when I was really trying to get big because of my position change, I had to go into inside linebacker and I was outside before. And so I was like fast, explosive, athletic, um, and I, my coach was just hammering me about getting bigger and stronger by all means necessary. And so my, the whole summer, I'm just like, just the dirtiest bulk possible, <laughs> you know, everything with deep dish pizzas and, uh, you know, burgers and cheeseburgers and, uh, anything I could stuff in my face and then just training as hard as I could in terms of being in, uh, the weight room with barbells, but not keeping up my athleticism, not keeping my skills training in the protocol, just literally just living in the gym and getting beastly big and immobile 
and I <laughs> and showed up, you know, for camp, and I just couldn't move. I had like terrible balance, uh, and it's almost like the muscle bound thing where they talk about yeah. where it's just like. And I know how that happens is because you don't maintain all those skills at the same time. And that, that was totally a detriment to my uh, performance on the field. So that was one big thing that I, I wish I could have changed alongside the whole carb loading thing uh, before games. Like what a stupid thing that our coach, like everybody's like eating waffles and pancakes and all this stuff before the game. And then we get to the game and everybody's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just crashing yeah. because of yeah. Anyway, how I much also, weight did you gain uh, during? Now this was over a summer. It was over a summer. Yeah, how much 20, weight? Twenty or thirty pounds. Twenty pounds. Yeah, yeah. I remember wow, he said so much. Pounds, That's too. a lot, dude. It yeah. was stupid. It was like I literally. It was a chore of just eat, 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 train, don't move. You know, like sit on the couch. And you know, how, how did you feel? Like I'm sure running straight ahead, you probably felt okay. But <laughs> yeah, you know, I was very strong. Like you couldn't push me over, yeah. right? But. Uh, if you came from the side, I would get like demolished. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You know the uh, the other thing that I would I would tell younger Adam to do also is that while you're doing those three movements too, because I know my mentality as a, as a young kid it was just do more, go harder, and is I would I would tell myself to perfect those three things yeah. because if oh, yeah. if I had the the attitude towards squatting, deadlifting, and overhead pressing that I do today of trying always critiquing my not really worrying about my PR or how heavy I'm lifting but just being meticulous about the movement the and, skill yeah and trying to be great at those three movements oh my god I just I think that if you if you have that as a base as a as a young as a young kid you get good at those movements I, the, I can't imagine that the body that that well I mean you look at people like and i think of people like uh, mike salemi who's a good friend of ours like just how strong and mobile and fit that guy is and i you know he's got the gymnastic background he then got to go I he know. was taught by lou simmons and all those guys like i mean he's yeah. and, and he's such a great example of somebody who has such a beautiful foundation of weight training and then it's expressed in the way he moves when you see the guy move it's unbelievable on all levels right just mobile strong fast resilient like mm -hmm. very impressive Awesome. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all the free stuff that we give away. So we have lots of guides on there that can help you from everything from burning body fat to building muscle, developing your core and your abs, getting a better squat, tons and tons of guides, all free, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Being underestimated is a really great thing sometimes. You could either use that as fuel for yourself or as an excuse. And I just choose to use that as fuel. It's always fueled me. And so if I put something out there, then I feel I'm accountable, right? So if I say to you, okay, I'm going to do this podcast, for example, or whatever it is, I feel like, oh, shit.